All right. Uh, hello. Good morning. Today I'm going to be talking about the kingdom of God, which is uh, hardly preached uh, by evangelists and uh, barely taught in churches. But I, I'm going to show you through scripture that that's what they were preaching from John the Baptist to the apostles, including Jesus Christ. They preached the kingdom of God. In Matthew 3, 1, and if you want to make a note of the scripture that I mentioned, then you can go back to it yourself because I'm going to be reading pretty quick with those scriptures. In Matthew 3, 1 and 3, 2, it says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Mark 1, 14, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Continuing to Mark 1, 15, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and receive the good news, the gospel. See, when Jesus sent out the disciples in Matthew 10, 7, and as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So also in Luke 10, 9, it says, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come near you. Even after Jesus' resurrection in Acts 1-3, it says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for forty days, and speaking of the, king, of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's what he was talking about. Everything was pertaining to the kingdom of God. Paul in Acts 2-25, which is way after the resurrection, Right? He preached the same gospel. In Acts 2, 20, 25, And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. You shall see my face no more. He was spending three years in Ephesus. Okay? If you go back one verse, uh, Acts 20, 24, Paul mentions actually the gospel of grace, which is synonymous for the gospel of the kingdom. Um, in Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. It's an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Everlasting gospel. There's one gospel. In Acts 28, 30, And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came into him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence and no man forbidden him. See, John the Baptist started preaching the kingdom of God is coming near until Paul in the end of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, preaching the same kingdom, the same kingdom. In Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. The word says, Seek the kingdom of God first, and all things shall be added to you. That's what you seek. You seek the kingdom of God, and all will be added to you. Your work, your health, your family. So let's define the kingdom of God. What is it, and what is it not? Is it the same, the kingdom of heaven? Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven? I think so. In Matthew 19, 23, uh, Jesus said unto the disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall not hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And he followed it with Matthew 19, 24. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven, synonymous with the kingdom of God. Well, let's compare Mark 1.14 to Matthew 4.17. Remember, Mark wrote to the Gentiles, Matthew wrote to the Jews. Hebraic language. That's why they use kingdom of heaven. Because the Jews were revered always saying the, the, the word God in vain. Until now, they write G-D. 
It says in Mark 1.14, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Matthew 4.17, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Different terms, but mean the same thing. In the prayer that we pray, Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that God's kingdom in heaven will be down on earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom on earth, not like the kingdom of heaven. And not like what they say, the kingdom of a thousand years. It's not mentioned anywhere here. Not mentioned in the gospel at all. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Now, listen to this. For unto us a child, this is a messianic uh, scripture. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom in order, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this kingdom forever. Forever. Where is the thousand year? I don't know. It's not mentioned here. See, that scripture I just read in, in, in Isaiah 9, 6 and on, it said it began with a child is born and it ends with a kingdom forever. Let's, let's define it a little further. In Revelation eleven fifteen, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice, voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. The worlds became gods. That's when Jesus comes. In Daniel 7, 13, And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. Jesus called him the Son of Man. This is about Jesus. Another messianic prophecy. Uh, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient days and they brought him near before him. 7.14 And there was given him dominion, glory, a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. That's what they do with the king. You serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall never pass. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed Shall, it says, shall not pass away and shall be there forever. In Luke 132, he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. In Luke 133, continuing on, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Thrown forever. Endless kingdom. Forever and ever. Never to be destroyed. Where's the thousand year? Okay. So now we have defined the kingdom. Let's begin with what existed from the beginning. The kingdom of Israel. What does that mean? And who is Israel? Remember when the disciples asked Jesus before he was ascending in Acts 1 6, he says, uh, When they therefore were came in together and asked him, saying, Lord, when will you restore again the kingdom of Israel? In Acts 1 7, he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. Remember, we saw the kingdom preached forever or till the end. So the question is, what are they saying? Who, who, who is this Israel? They still didn't get it. Just like the, the Jews never got it. About the Messiah. I'll elaborate. In Luke 17, 20. And when he was demanded by the Pharisees. When the kingdom of God should come. They drilled him. 
When will the kingdom of God come? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, he said. Neither shall they say, there is the kingdom of God. There is the kingdom of God. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you, within you, among the believers. You can fly to Saudi Arabia and you can see the kingdom. You can fly to the Jordan kingdom and see that's the kingdom. You can't do that with the kingdom of God because it's a spiritual kingdom. I'm going to tick off some dispensationalists now. They hate the word spiritual as if it doesn't exist. Jesus never told John in, in John, uh, sorry, in, in Nicodemus in John 3, 3, you must be born of a spirit to see the kingdom of God. No, he didn't say it. So the Pharisees, which didn't understand about the kingdom of God, the disciples came with the question about returning the kingdom to Israel. They were thinking of the kingdom like they read about in David. That's what they're looking for. And the Jews are still looking for the same kind of kingdom. But they missed it. Because they always talk, ask them. I have a lot of friends. Oh no, when the Messiah comes, it's going to be peace and joy. That's right. That's what we have. It's a spiritual realm that you do not see with observation. No matter what goes on around us, we have the hope of glory. We have peace and joy now. Not later. We'll have more peace and joy when he comes back. There's not going to be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more sin. That's the heavenly kingdom coming down. But there's a kingdom now where there's joy and peace. My friends, my Jewish friends, that's what you missed. You see, Jesus came with a different kingdom. He came with a different agenda. You know, they always say Jesus was a Jew, yes, but he came to fulfill the law. He said the kingdom doesn't come with observation. The kingdom was invisible to most Jews, except for the remnant that believed on him. In Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John, John the Baptist. Remember, John the Baptist was mentioned in Malachi, the end of the chapter. The last two verses of the Old Testament. Behold, I will send you Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But Jesus told us, Elijah has come in John the Baptist, in his spirit. That Elijah, uh, or that John the Baptist, was also mentioned in Isaiah 40. He's paving the path to the coming of the Messiah. And that's exactly what happened in the New Testament. All they have to do is read it. See, the kingdom of God, in Matthew 17, 21, it says, not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. In Luke 6, 46, I believe, he says, why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? There's many people confessing Jesus. They never obey him. He says, why do you call me Lord? You know what? Lord is master over your life. If you're my master, i got to obey you. You can't just wear a cross and say, I'm a Christian. That's not how it works. When, 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 when Jesus' mother, Mary, and the brothers came in knocking at the door, he says, they told Jesus, your brothers and your mother are looking for you. He says, who is my brother and my mother? He pointed to the disciples. Those who obey the Father. They were brothers in humanity. We call them brothers in humanity, Jews, Muslims alike. There's only one race. But they're not my brothers and sisters in the Lord. In Matthew 5, 20, For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. These guys look really righteous on the outside. You shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is a spiritual in nature. It isn't a political one. If you're looking for one, you missed it. Again, that's what John told Nicod uh, Jesus told Nicodemus in, 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 in 3, 5, John 3, 5. You must be born of the Spirit to see the kingdom of God or to enter the kingdom of God. First you're born out of your mother womb. Then you have this regeneration of the Spirit. Ephesians 2, 1, he quickened us. We were 
dead in our sins and trespasses, and now we're, our soul is resurrected. Um, this is why dispensationalists hate the word spiritual. It's in the book. They, they could repeat John 3.3 3 and 3.5. You must be born of the Spirit. Could you like slow down and understand what does that mean? How could it not be a spiritual kingdom that exists right now? Not comprehending. Because they tend to just listen to a man's teaching. They can glance over the scripture like they, they know it already. They have memorized what their teachers have told them. In Romans 14, 17, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. That's where the peace comes from, my fellow brothers, Jews. We have peace and joy now. Notice that? That's why until now they're looking for the Messiah who will bring that peace and joy and righteousness, like the verse I just mentioned above. But they missed it. It's there. It's been there for 2,000 years. And their kinsmen came to it came into the kingdom their kinsmen came into the kingdom that's what Paul says in Romans 10 1 he is his desire that his kinsmen his brothers and sisters the Jews would come into Christ he never says uh, it is my desire that we repeat the uh, repeat the, the, the red heifer or to reestablish the feast of tabernacles or reestablish uh, uh, the Levitical priesthood he never said that he says, I wish they would come to Christ like I did. Never talked about a physical temple again. Because in the New Testament, we are the temple of God. In my father's house, there are many mansions, meaning Monet. And if you, if you love me, you obey my word. Me and the Father will come and abode in you. We will live in you in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the, the kingsmen understood, some of them, the disciples, the remnant. And that's why in Romans 11, 25, it says, and part of them believed. Romans 11 has nothing to do with eschatology or end times. It says the part, some part believed, the remnant, the disciples, Elizabeth and, and Zechariah, Joseph and Mary, Anna, the old woman that was waiting for the Messiah in the temple when she found him, she went and told many. That's the part that believed on the Messiah. And the bigger part, he says, crucify him. Let Barabbas out and crucify Jesus. And let his blood be upon us and upon our children. When Jesus was carrying the cross in the Via della Rosa, women came weeping. He says, why do you weep? Weep for yourselves and for your children for what's to come. A prophecy 40 years down the line, about 70 AD. So let's get back to the kingdom of Israel. Let's go back to the, to the Torah. Exodus 19.5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice, God says, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, they sh you shall be to me a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people. That's why he chose them, to be a beacon, to be a light for the world. A holy nation. These are the words that they should speak unto the children of Israel. It says kingdom of priests, a holy nation. The kingdom of Israel was a people in the wilderness. And Mount Sinai is when he gave him the covenant. There was no land yet. This is in the wilderness. A whole generation before they went to the, into the promised land. So let's go to the next verse in Exodus 19.6. Well, actually, I covered 19.6. It says you'll be uh, to me a kingdom... Uh, of, of priest, a holy nation. But did they obey his word? Did they keep his covenant? No, they broke it. They know it. Nobody denies. They all know it. They practice idolatry. Solomon built the temple to worship idols right where you enter Jerusalem from the east, right before the temple of God that he had built. He spent seven years building the temple of God and spent, spent 13 years building his palace. Thank God he repented. 
not in first king god sent him two angels to repent he didn't repent but the whole book of ecclesiastes is a repentance vanity of vanities emptiness of emptiness it's a good book so if you're not in the kingdom you belong to the devil's kingdom that i assure you i used to belong to it i lived in sin nobody preached the gospel to me but I, I sought out the truth, and that's all God is waiting for you. He does everything else. Um, I'm not going to even get into that. I was going to mention Matthew 12, 26, when they accused Jesus of being Satan. And he says, how can a kingdom divided stand? I'll leave that for another day. See, the kingdom of God consists of a king and a people. Like what he started with in Mount Sinai. King and a people. You serve the king. They didn't obey his voice. They didn't keep the covenant. They broke it. Another example is in Judges, about Gideon. Judges 8, 22. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both you and your son. He saved them in a war. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of the Midian. In Judges 8, 23, and Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. They wanted a king. God wanted to be their king. Uh, the, the, the Jews wanted a Gideon's dynasty. You rule over us, and then your sons will rule over us. He said, no, the Lord will rule over you. Um, it's the same thing with Samuel. I'm not going to bother you with that. In 1 Samuel 8, 1, you know, they told Samuel, we want a king. And Samuel got upset. God told them, don't be upset. They don't want me as a king. And he, you know, they, he brought in Saul, uh, which means asked for anyway. And Saul rebelled and God had mercy on them. He brought them David, a king after God's heart. They wanted a monarchy. They didn't want a theocracy. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over this. In Hosea uh, 39, says, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And thy judges of whom thou said it. Give me a king and princes. Hosea, I'm a prophet. Zechariah 14, 9, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord, and his name is one. King over all. Jesus on the cross brought both the, Gentile, uh, the Gentiles into the kingdom. Now it's Jews and Gentiles. God doesn't see Jews or Gentile anymore. He sees believing of the Messiah, his son, and non-believing. That's all he sees. In Isaiah 2.2 2 to 2.4, which is a messianic prophecy, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all the nations shall flow into it. This is a prophecy about the Gentiles coming in. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, of Jacob, and they will teach us his ways, and they will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Isaiah 2.4 and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plow, uh, plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against the nation, another nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That's how Isaiah prophesied that the Gentile nations will pour into the kingdom. Gentiles will, know, will, will learn how to worship God. He didn't know how it's going to happen. That's why it's called the mystery. The mystery of Christ, the church.
that consists of Jews and Gentiles. The Messiah came, my friends, 2,000 years ago, and you missed it. Elijah came as John the Baptist. When you have your supper and you leave an empty place, an, an empty plate waiting on Elijah to come, Elijah has come. Elijah has come in the form of John the Baptist. So in order to have a kingdom, you must have a king and a subject. That's what the kingdom means. You have a king and you have a people that serve the king. And this, this kingdom actually, believe it or not, started way back in Genesis. Genesis 49.10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. You see how it said Judah? Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. And the scepter, which means crown, as like the rulers have the crown. What does Shiloh mean? It means to whom that it belongs. What belongs? The scepter. In other words, the Messiah was an old prophecy way back in Genesis. Just like is the most famous uh, psalm uh, that is quoted in the, in the New Testament. When Jesus, when, when it says uh, in Psalms 1, the Lord... Yahweh or Yahweh said unto my Lord my Adonai this is David speaking God told my master to sit on my right hand until I make your enemies thy footstool I was God's enemy and now I'm under his footstool but it's better to be under his footstool now than later when he comes back because when he comes back is a judgment see no rabbi can answer this if it's David's son, why would David call his son master? You don't do that. But see, he says, before Abraham, I am. Jesus said, the Jews laughed at him. Abraham paid Melchizedek tithes. That was Jesus, a Christophany. In, um, let's see. Um, those people was a nation of Israel. It was a people before there was a land. Mm -hmm. And God told them, if you obey me, if you keep my covenant. And they didn't for 1,400 years. So, um, I'm going to end here and hopefully I'll do another session to continue talking about the kingdom of God. Um, just because uh, my time is expired on this video um, but uh, I hope you understood what the kingdom of God is and that you should come to it you should repent and receive the gospel that Jesus died for you on the cross and bore your sins that's the only way to have a relationship with God if you uh, don't practice sin so God bless you and for the believers Keep the faith.